So let's look at this this top guy right here. Okay, what do you notice about these two here? Ready? Well, that side's just the left plus simple side. Is it? Without the, the, the seven plugged in. Is it? Mm -hmm. How do you know? Well. Sounds like a guess. Doesn't sound like a bad guess. Josie? I, I think that they're the exact, they're equivalent expressions. One of them is more simplified than the other one. And the most simplified one is the one on the right. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're correct. This one, I took the time to simplify this expression and come up with this one. Okay. Uh, a couple of important things. The first is, this expression and this expression are just like Josie said, equivalent. Okay, what does it mean that these these expressions are equivalent? I think the answer is kind of based on what I had you do at the beginning of class here today. What makes two equivalent expressions equivalent to each other? Well, it's like a test of equivalent expressions. Be sure that they're equivalent cadence. How do you mean? The same number. So if the expression here is this top thing, which can't be a number, right? I mean, it represents a number in a way, but it's not a number. So I can't like make it be a number and make this be the same number. So what do you? Could you go more into that and explain what you mean exactly? How do we get the same number? Okay, let's clear up a couple of things. And I'll harp on this every time it comes up. Not an equation, so you can't solve it. Okay. Some people say, oh, do you want me to solve this out? Okay. This expression right here, this thing with a num plugged in for seven, that is not solving. It's just simplifying. It's doing arithmetic. It's maybe following the order of operations, if you want to call it that. But it's not solving. Solving is figuring out what x is, or a, or y, or whatever the unknown thing is. Right? We can only solve equations, not an equation. I have no idea what this is equal to. There's nothing there. Okay? So it's just called an expression. Not an equation, can't solve it. Or were you talking about this cadence where you do all this stuff? Okay, you simplify it after. What do we do from here to there? Okay, so you plug in something for x. Okay, what do you plug in for x? Does it have to be 7? What can it be? Alex? It could be any number. Right, any number. So let's put it all together. If I plug in <coughs> a number for x, then I'll know that these two are equivalent expressions of what happens. Like, if you get the same number, yeah. you get the same result, right? Plug the same number in for x, get the same number in the end. Okay? All right. Um, what if I had two expressions and I, I plugged a number in and the same number came out? Does that mean that they're necessarily the same? Could be a coincidence. Could I have two expressions that I put the same number into and get the same number out of? Yeah. Sure, that yeah. can happen. It could just be just a coincidence. Okay? But with equivalent expressions, it's not a coincidence. They will always, no matter what you plug in there, always, always, always give you the same thing. If I plug 5 in here and 5 in here, same thing. 7 in there, 7 in there, 10 in there, 10 in there, I'll always get the same thing. That's what ex equivalent expressions do. That's what they are, OK? And not everybody realizes that when they're simplifying algebraic expressions. They don't realize that, that kind of the job of an equivalent expression is to do the same thing as this expression, meaning when you plug something in for x. So then here's, here's the other question. Why then am I bothering to simplify these expressions? Sean? Uh, to make it easier to maneuver. 
What do you mean by maneuver? Like, it'd be kind of hard if you wanted to add on to, there's more, like, parts of this problem, I guess. Uh -huh. That it, it'd be easier if you just made it, simplified it to 70 instead of moving the entire thing. Well, what I mean by simplify is not, like, everything in green is not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about taking this and combining all the like terms and stuff and turning it into that. Why would you do that? Okay. Yeah, it's less work when I plug something in for X, right? This, a couple steps, done. Here, there's a bunch of stuff I had to do it. Multiplication here, add these together, multiply those things together, combine those things together. Just multiple steps. Here I just multiply, subtract, done. Okay. That's why it's called simpler. Simplify. Because it does the same job with less work. Okay. That's why we're simplifying these. Particularly with something like this. This one's just the crazy lots of work. Okay. This is a little bit of work, but a lot less work than that to plug in a number. Okay? That's, based, that's why we call it simplified, because what we want to do with these expressions often is plug things in for x and see what happens. Do it again, see what happens. And then see like, well what if I just plug in like all the numbers in for x? What kind of different things, what kind of an different answers will I get out of this thing? Okay? Is it jiving? You get it? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Let's do this first. I'll have you just take out the the homework. There seems to be some confusion between you and myself. Um, I thought I said to do the last ones. You did the first like eight, but that's good. The first eight are, are good to have done. So I have a little bit more than that. Only one more than that. Okay. So just check the ones that I have written up here. All right. See how you did. Check for mistakes if your answers don't match up. Okay. So we got seven times six times four x minus one minus two x plus twelve. Okay, should we multiply by the six first or by the seven first? Uh, the answer is we could do either one we want. Okay, it's gonna look slightly different for the two people who do this differently. All right, so I'll show you both, but we'll just make sure that we are using that distributive property appropriately. But let me just remind you real quick, if I had something like five times x plus two y plus three z minus five, Okay, it's like I have a rectangle. Remember the rectangle for the distributive property? We're gonna use this rectangle a lot. We use it later when we get to this thing called FOIL, which I will not call FOIL, but maybe you've heard of it. So there's five, and I'm gonna make this side, this whole thing, right? So x plus two y, maybe two y is this big, plus maybe three z is this big, who knows? And then, well, you're gonna have to use kind of your imagined negative five, okay? See the thing? That's a, that's a negative distance, so we kind of cut into this, and it's kind of weird. We're just going to have to imagine that like this thing's going to have a negative area. Right? They're going to be like negative squares. Can we imagine that? Like, so when we got all done, we just like take those squares away from whatever squares we have over here. So we can add on that negative part. So we get these different rectangles, right? We want to find the area of all the rectangles, the area this one would be negative 25 area, so these are like red squares that are going to like destroy these squares. Uh, what about the area of this gap? 15. Very good. This one? 10y. 10y, and this one? 5x. Good, 5x plus 10y plus 15z plus a negative 25, minus 25. Okay, so if we distribute, and we have multiple terms, we would distribute to all of the terms where they're separated by addition. Okay. So I can distribute to more than just two things, all right? Two different approaches here, one in blue. Uh, let's just pick, should we multiply by the seven first or the six first? Six. Let's do the one where we multiply by six first. 
Okay, so I have this 6. And it's multiplied. And you might think, well, 7 times 6, that comes first, right? This, this, that multiplication is first. But parentheses is superseding that because the 6 is inside this parentheses. Okay? So I have to deal with the inside, the parentheses, before I multiply by that 7. Okay? So how do I multiply by the 6? Well, the 6 is being multiplied by parentheses. And when I multiply a 6 by parentheses, I distribute. So 6 times 4. 24x, 6 times negative 1, negative 6, now we subtract 2x and add 12. So far so good? Okay. What's that? Yes? Good? Okay. Distributed the 6. All right, now I have, just like addition and subtraction in here, all right, I have 24x's. Here I have negative 2x's, okay? So I can take these 2x's from these 24x's, then I'll have left 22 those x's. Here I have 12 ones and negative six ones, okay? Or six negative ones. I can take those six from those 12 and I'll be left with a positive six. And look at what I have here. I have a distributive, seven times 22x times six. So seven times 22? 154. 154? Yeah. And seven times six, 42. 154x plus 42. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the answer on the board that you put was 42. It was 6 plus 6. It was 6. Oh. Six. Um, and yeah, I got 42 too. Ooh. I had this. And then. Oh, I just was going too fast. And by all means, it should be 42. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. If you had 42, congrats, you were right now as well. John? Never mind, you are going to finish this problem. I have a question on a different problem. Okay, I'm going to just work this through again. In a different way, we multiply by 7 first, all right? So we start over again. All right, now, what I need to see here is that I have one big term here. And another one, and another one. I got three things that I need to distribute the seven to. Okay, so I'll distribute the seven to this thing. I'll distribute the seven to this, and to this. We'll work from right to left because I think you're gonna we're gonna want to clear this up here. So seven times twelve is eighty-four. Eighty-four. Very good. Okay. Seven times negative two, negative fourteen x plus eighty-four. Now I have. 7 times this stuff here. Let's see what that looks like. 7 times 6 times 4x minus 1. Well, 7 times, like, yeah, 1, 2, 3 things being multiplied together. Well, let's multiply the 7 by the 6. Get 42. 42 times 4x minus 1. The reason why I did it in so many steps is because sometimes people get distribution crazy and they distribute it to, they multiply by the six, they also multiply it by that, okay? You get a little crazy. Yeah, kids? So why can't you multiply the seven and by the, and the parentheses inside the parentheses? Well, I, yeah, I'm trying to explain that here with this step and what I'm saying here is what I have is a number times another number, six times four x minus one. Okay. And when I multiply that by seven, I'm gonna multiply by a third number, right? So seven times six times four x minus one. Now, if I wanna get technical, I mean, seven times six, let me just write this down. Two times three times four, just an example of multiplying three things together, just like we're doing here, three things multiplied together. Now, is this the same as this? Yes. Yeah. So then 7 times 6 times 4x minus 1 must be the same as 6 times 7 times 4x minus 1. It's the same. And then I could, by itself, distribute the 7. Okay? That'll be done. But then I'll also have to distribute the 6. I'm done with that. Because I need to multiply, if I did that, I need to multiply 6 by whatever this is. What this is, is the parentheses, whatever it is I get when I distribute 7. Okay? 
which, if I distribute the 7, multiply this, this stuff by 7, and then distribute the 6, multiply this stuff by 6, it would, would have been the same as just multiplying everything by 42 all at once. So can you do it? Can you distribute the 7 and then the 6? Yes, you can. Can you distribute the 6 and then the 7? Yes, you can. But it would be the same as if I just multiplied these together and distributed 42 all the way through everything. Does that answer your question? But you don't want to multiply the 7 by the 6 and get 42 and distribute the 7 into the parentheses and get 28x minus 7, and then have 42 out here. That would be the same as saying like, oh, 2 times 3 times 4, 2 times 3, 2 times 4. Would you do that? No, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do 2 times 3 and get 6, and 2 times 4 and get 8, and then multiply those two numbers together. We're just multiplying. So we're just going to multiply in sequence. I'll multiply these things together, and then I'll take that result, multiply it by that. Same thing's happening here. Multiply these together, take that result, multiply it by this third thing. I, I could go on and on about that, but I feel like I would start confusing people more. So I'll just leave it there for the time being. So 42 times 4, 168. Yeah, 168. Minus 42, minus 14x, plus 84. Here I have 168x's, minus 14x's. I bet that's 154x. Negative 42 plus 84, 42. Sean? I did mine a, a little different. I still got the same answer, but it's just a little bit different than that. I did kind of what you were saying uh -huh. you didn't have to do, but I did, I distributed the six, or, yeah, I distributed the six into the... Like this. Oh, yeah, never mind. I did, yeah, I distributed the six into that, and then I distributed the seven into the rest of those. Oh, to all four of them? Yeah. And That's then fine? I still got the same answer. Of course. Yeah. Of course you did. Because they're, the, they're the same thing. Whether I collect like turns in here and then multiply by the seven, yeah. or I just strip the seven to this, and this, and this, and this. Yeah, just a little same. longer. Yeah, a little bit. Cadence? Um, uh, I can do number five. You can do number five, unless there's a question about six. Any further questions about six? No, number five then. Number five. Plus two is five. Is that my first no. thing to do? Why not? Because you have to distribute those. Because you have to. The, the mo even more technical is multiply first, right? Yeah. Order of operations, multiply first. How do I multiply by two? I distribute. So that's what two needs to do. But before that, even I mean, could I could distribute the two to all three of these things inside the parentheses? But before that, I have the option. Sean. You can uh, put the negative five x and the. 12x together. We could do that first, and that's just a personal preference. It's what I do, I just have it. So 12x minus 5x is 7x plus 2 in there. Now I will distribute the 2, and I'll get 14x plus 4, and I'll get 14x plus 7. Can you get that one right on the front page? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with Johnny. Number 9. You didn't have to do that, but. Okay, it's pretty quick. X times x plus 1 minus x. What's your question? How do you get it x squared? How do you get it x squared? Yeah. What does uh, that, well, tell me what 5 squared means. 5 times itself. 5 times itself. Okay, so now we have a thing times a parentheses. We're going to distribute that thing, right? That number. <coughs> I'm going to distribute the x to the x and the x to the 1. So x times x. Well, that sounds familiar. It's kind of like 5 times 5, right? Yeah. It's a shorter way to write 5 times 5? X squared. Well, 5 squared, for 5 oh. specifically. But x times x is x squared. And what's x times 1? X. Oh, I get it. And then, well, I have this minus x. x minus x is 0. x squared oh. is all that's left. Okay. Josie, was that your question too? Or? No, I had a question on what we were supposed to do as well. Sean, do you have one on yeah. the one that we're yeah. supposed to do? Okay, let's do that Four. one first. Four. 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 Four
4, negative 3x minus 4x times 8 minus 3 plus 9. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do 8 minus 3. Okay. What could be easier? 3x minus 4x times 5 plus 9. Okay, we're looking here. We got we got like a we got one term here. We got a, a term right here. I start to see after lots and lots of years of doing this, you start to see things that are multiplied together as like one chunk that you can't really you know, break apart. Like I can't take negative three x and subtract four x from it because this negative four x is part of this multiplication, right? So it's linked. It's, I can't I can't break it off like that. And then I have this term here. Okay. Well, this is I need to multiply these together. So this is negative. 4x times 5. Which is negative 20x. Which is negative 20x. And negative 3x minus 20x is negative 23x. I just kind of randomly threw numbers into these problems, and apparently I just, there's something in my subconscious that makes me go to negative 23, because it showed up a lot, I noticed. Anyway, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, Josie, your your rebel question about when you weren't supposed to. Um, be. how would you distribute with number twelve because x is squared and it doesn't yeah. really fit? Okay. Question. Okay, let's just write this out the long way, and then we'll just ask ourselves how we could kind of clean it up a little bit. So we're going to distribute this whole thing, negative three x, do all of these. So we get negative 3x times x squared, and negative 3x, right, like plus negative 3x times 4x, and then we'll say plus a negative 3x times a negative 2. Let's start here. What's negative 3x times negative 2? Positive. Negative times negative. Watch out for those negatives. They get everybody. Even me. 6x. Let's go here. Okay, let's rewrite this real quick. I'm, I'm multiplying a negative 3 by an x, multiplying that by a 4, multiplying that by an x, and just multiplying four numbers in a row, really. Okay? So if I had uh, if I have negative 3 times x times 4 times x, I could just say negative 3 times 4 times x times x. Isn't that right? Yeah. I'm just reordering it using the commutative property here. So negative 3 times 4, negative 12. remember multiplication, negative 12. And what's x times x? What's the short way to write x? x, x squared. X squared. Oh. Let's look over here. Well, the only number part is negative 3, so we can just throw that down there. Negative 3 times x times, what's x squared mean? x times x squared. So we really just have x times x times x, right? This is x times x. x cubed. x cubed. Negative 3 x cubed minus 12 x squared plus so 6 x. Yes, Cadence. I have one more. It's Great. number two. Number two. 12 minus 7 times 5 minus 8x plus 2x. All right, so we got like a term right here. All this stuff is tied together by that multiplication and another term over here. So I, I'm not going to do 12 minus 7. I'm going to get 5. Not going to do 12 minus 7 to get 5, because negative 7 is supposed to be multiplied by the parentheses. So I'll do that by distribution. So negative 7 times negative 5 is negative 35. Negative 7 times negative 8x is a negative times a negative. We got a positive. Positive 56x. Okay. That's done. I distributed the negative 7 plus 2x. So 12 minus 35, negative 23. There it is again. Negative 23, um, 56x plus 2x, 8x minus 23. I, it takes some practice. I know that the, like having a negative on a number is being distributed, and especially when that, when that negative is in the middle of the expression somewhere, you kind of forget about distributing the negative along with it. Sometimes that happens. I don't know if this is going to help you or confuse you, but we could just think like 12 minus 
this stuff here, right? And this stuff is 7 distributed into all of that. I can distribute it like a, like a positive 7, but then remember that I'm supposed to subtract the result of all this. Okay? Now this, okay, it's like I'm subtracting all that stuff. Right? Totally legitimate way to think of it. But that means that I need to subtract the result, which is a 35 minus a 56x, which means now I really just have like a, a negative 1 that I'm supposed to distribute. So now I distributed the 7, and now oh, I had to distribute the negative 1. Okay. So it's faster just to just not think of it like that, to think of it more as a negative 7 that you would distribute into the parentheses. Okay? Go with Monica, and then I'm going to just move on to my next thing here. Number one. Number one. Times three times two minus six x plus seven. So we've got something there, got a term there, and I have a term there. I'm going to distribute the five in parentheses, giving me fifteen x plus ten. And now comes the rest of it, which is minus six x plus seven. 15x minus 6x, 9x, and 10 plus 7, 17. Did I get that one right on the front? Yes. All right. Now that we are down on, yeah, we got a few minutes left. Um, So we're working on all this simplifying expressions stuff. The reason why we want to simplify expressions is because in due time, we're going to want to work with these expressions, plug stuff into them, and see what happens. Or maybe we'll want to solve an equation and figure out exactly what x is. Okay. Let me give you what I hope to be a helpful little visual. Okay. I'm going to show you algebra, right? like all of algebra that you're going to learn. It breaks down to a pretty simple thing. Right. So we do this same sequence usually in, in algebra. We talk about an expression, let's say a linear expression. Then we move on to linear equations. Then we move on to linear functions. And really, functions and graphs go together. A graph is a kind of a representation of a function. Right. The graphs are pretty heavy into their, they're like their own deal. So we have linear expressions. A linear expression is any expression where x, like the highest power that you see for x is 1. What does it look like when the power of x is 1? John? X. Just x, right? What's 2 to the first power? 2. 2, let's see. 1,000 to the first power. Thousand. What's x to the first power? X. It's just x. So if my expression has x to the first, and that's the highest that it goes, like no x squared, no x cubed, no, no nothing like that, just x to the first, we're talking about linear. How many linear expressions have we looked at today? A lot. A lot. A lot. Let's look at that, that answer sheet from the very first page here. Okay, is this linear? Yes. Yeah. Linear? Yes. Yeah. Linear? No. 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 It's got an x squared. Linear? Yes. Linear? Yes. Linear? Yes. Linear? Yes. Linear? Yes. Linear? Yes. Linear? No. Linear? Yes. yes. Okay, so they're linear because they have x to the first power only. Okay, we call them linear because of their graphs. All right, they have this steady stepwise pattern as we go through all the, po the possibilities for x. That's for maybe another time. So linear expressions. If I were to say how much of linear expressions we've talked about, I would say it's like, like if this is all of linear expressions that we might learn, we learned a lot of it. Right? If we have anything less to do with linear expressions, it's just a little bit more. Because okay? what can we do with linear expressions? We're going to simplify linear expressions. That's typically how it goes. So we have simplified lots and lots and lots of linear expressions. Any linear expression, when you simplify it down, will always be some kind of an x term, and then maybe a constant, a number added or subtracted to it. 
So it'll always look something like some number times x plus some other number. Okay. Now that number times x might be negative. That number that you're adding here, that might also be negative. But every linear expression can be simplified down to look like that. Okay. Then we've got linear equations. What's the difference between an expression and an equation? Josie? You can actually solve an equation. You can solve an equation. How do you know an equation when you see it? There's an equal sign in there. It's pretty simple, an equal sign. If I had mx plus b equals some number, n, I don't know what number, I, what, what letter I should use, but it's equal to some number, or even if it's equal to some other linear expression. Like on the other side of the equation, we have other x's and stuff. Still, we're looking at a linear equation that can be solved for x, usually. Okay. As far as linear equations go, we've dabbled. We've done some dabbling in linear equations. We haven't really gone full bore into that. Okay. It's kind of like next. But the thing that we're doing right now in Mr. Stewart's class is we're looking at expressions. We're going really a lot into the linear expressions. Okay? We've dealt with quadratic expressions a little bit. Okay. Just a very little bit. Let me show you some quadratic expressions. There's one, there's one, and there's one. Why do you think they're called quadratic as opposed to linear? Alex? Because they have exponents. Okay. Yes, exponents is an important part of it. It's a specific exponent to be called the quadratic. Yes? This is like the power, right? These are to the first power. These are to the second power. These have x's to the first power, but they also have x's to the second power. So if you have an x to the second power, and that's the highest power that you have, you're called the quadratic. Okay? So we've dealt some quadratic expressions. Right? Josie asked about number 12, right? Look at number 12 if you wrote that in your notes. Now what's different about number 12? Yeah? It has equal power to the third power. So we have also dabbled in something called cubic. Cube, right? Or cubed, x cubed. So if you have an x cubed in your expression, you're a cubic expression. Uh, and, uh, actually all of these, but it's, it's easier to think of these, they're all what we call polynomials. Okay? Polynomials, it just it includes all of them. To the first power. To the second power, right? so something that looks like this, ax squared equals bx plus c. Quadra or cubic could be ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Okay. Just meaning that I could have an x cubed thing, an x squared, an x to the first, and then just a number with no x's on it, like number 12 has. Okay. Does it have an x cubed, an x squared, an x, and a number? All four of those? It doesn't have an x. It's just or does it's cubed and squared. Just cubed and squared. So it doesn't have an x. But if we just draw an x in there, like if you put plus 2x, that would be a different expression than what number 12 we started at. It would also be a cubic expression. Polynomial is this is a polynomial. This is a polynomial. If we expand it out to one more term with x to the fourth, well, that'd be a polynomial. We would call it a fourth degree polynomial. If we included an x to the fifth, it'd be a fifth degree polynomial. Okay? So we've done quadratics, cubics, and just by default, because we've done quadratics and cubics, we've also done just a little bit of that polynomial stuff. Okay. Um, let's see without maybe realizing it. You've actually done a little bit of some functions, some linear functions, okay? Today, at the beginning of class, you did just a tiny bit of quadratic functions. We haven't really dealt with cubic, but since this is a, this is a polynomial, we've kind of done some polynomial functions, okay? A function is just some kind of a linear, or quadratic, or cubic, or polynomial thing that you plug in a number and see what comes out. So a function you can just kind of think of as something goes into a function and then something comes out of that function. What's that? Oh, we got like one more. 
So what we're going to do here is pretty soon is we're going to go further into the linear stuff, okay? But I do want to kind of show you that there's this link too. It's not just this, okay? Which is what we see a lot in algebra. There's also these. There's expressions which are not equations. Equations would have equal signs. Functions which is just anything you put something into and get something out of. And there's these graphs we haven't really dealt with yet. So for your homework, let's finish that worksheet. Okay, make sure it's all done. That'll be it. Okay.